in the strength joint between your metacarpals and your, or sorry, your metatarsals and your tarsals, right? But you also have this joint here between your first and your second metatarsals. Okay, so in the spring, you see that there's this separation now between the metatarsals that was not there before. Why? Why do we have this gap? What got injured to cause this gap to appear? Right, so we have our Lisfranc ligament here. The ligament connects which two bones? The second metatarsal. The medial cuneiform and the second metatarsal. Yeah, so we've got our medial cuneiform, we've got our second metatarsal. Right, so medial cuneiform is here where the first metatarsal would be, right? These two are in a line. So the ligament does not follow a straight line like this. The ligament goes diagonally, right, connecting the medial cuneiform with this second metatarsal. So the ligament is basically there putting tension. It's pulling the second metatarsal against the first metatarsal to kind of keep them together. If that ligament ends up being broken, then <coughs> nothing is holding the metatarsal together and they are able to stop it. So, number, so that's the first thing you should know about the Lisfranc joint injury. Yeah. Second thing is that we do weight-bearing x-rays of the feet. Right? So not just regular x-rays of the feet, but actual weight-bearing x-rays of the foot. So instead of sitting down, the patient's going to be standing up. Right? They're going to step onto the cassette. They're going to try and put their weight onto the cassette. And you shoot your AP and lateral foot while they are putting their weight, putting their pressure on the foot. So, have you done weight bearing? Um, there should be an order specifically for weight bearing. But you may also see it show up in the comments if the doctor doesn't know how to properly order it. Is it normal to do like a for a Yes. Yes. So you will see this <coughs> report or something like this. So if the doctor suspects that there might be something, right, that they're not sure, right, first thing is just get an x-ray. If so you can see that there's widening, then it's like, all right, now we might need to do CT or MRI to get a closer look, to get more detail as to what's going on. Yes, ma'am. usually, like, when you open your head, do you know how much is an MRI procedure? How much is an MRI procedure? Like how expensive? Um, how expensive is it? Right that I do not know. I did not really work. Right. Well, it depends on your insurance. It depends well, no on where insurance. you go. I'm just saying, like, Ooh, insurance. Yeah. Insurance, it could be over yeah. If I had to guess, probably minimum couple thousand. If I guess. I almost spit it. What's the question? I almost spit it. So, but like I said, yeah, yeah. I don't do, right? we as x ray, we don't really deal with building. In the hospital, it's the charge <coughs> master that does the building, right? Basically, you've got a whole list of procedures. The procedures have your codes, right? Your CPT codes. Charge master assigns a price based on the procedure, right? So it's just a giant book with a list of costs on it based on insurance. The reason why I'm asking is because we had a patient last time that came in and she was like, she uh, didn't want to do the x-ray because she didn't know how much money we're going to be, but she was like, that, uh, you know, you just, you know, you're just saying that we'd like to order something, we don't need the x-ray, something like that, right? Correct. <laughs> yes. So, if a patient ever asks you how much the x-ray is going to cost, how should you respond? That's a great question. Ask the, go back to the front desk. I'm not sure. <laughs> Right, so right, we as x ray types, right, we can't answer, right? We don't know accurate, we don't know the pricing, right? We're not involved in the pricing. So the last thing you want to do 
is tell the patient a price and they get something else. Because then what are they going to do? That's right, they're going to say, well, my x-ray tech who introduced herself as Melanie told me that I was only going to get charged $60 for this. Why is there a $120 charge on my bill, right? So don't tell the patient, right? Don't even, don't estimate for the patient how much it's going to be, right? There's no point. You don't know how much it's going to be. Even if you think you know how much it's going to be, you don't know if it's changed since then, since you last heard about it. So best thing to do is just to direct the patient over to building or to their own insurance. And they should be able to sort that out for them. Right? In, now, it's true insurance and building, they're kind of opaque. They don't um, like to give out numbers either until it's time <coughs> to actually give the bill, mm -hmm. right? But at the very least, if they do give a number, you know that it's gonna be more accurate or something the patient will be able to trust compared to whatever you say. So don't tell the patient how much their x-rays are gonna cost, right? Don't do that. Just like you don't tell patients if there's anything on their x-ray, right? We don't diagnose, and we also don't do building. Right? Exactly. The only, well, hopefully in a more professional manner than that. <laughs> the only time you should ever mention the cost is if the patient comes by and they're like, if I want these images for myself, how much is that gonna be, right? At that point, you could maybe like talk to the front desk, talk to the clerk or talk to medical records, and tell them, okay, yeah, you can put your x-rays or your images up to a CD and it'll be $25 for the CD. Isn't this what they're charging for your own, like, x-rays, like, yeah. Oh, thank you. Anyone that's going to copy of the CD? But it's not that it's just like 20 bucks or whatever. Yeah, it's going to be 20, 25. Yes. So, and some people come in huh? Seven out of our five, I did have two questions. In the end, will you give me a chance to ask those? Yes. Of the bone cyst and yes. so, why am I leaving? Yes, board. so. So tell me that once you finish this. So this frank joint injury. Are we okay with this one here, right? If you see weight bearing, your first thought should be this frank, right? If you see something about the separation of metatarsals, your first thought should be this frank. Very good. If you see this frank ligament, your first thought should be this frank. This frank. Okay, very good. Right. So. This is our, these are some examples of the spring injuries, right? And then we also have Osgood Schlatter. So this one deals with the tibial tuberosity, the part of the tibia that sticks out right here. Okay. So attached to the tibial tuberosity, we've got this ligament right here. This is our patellar ligament because it connects to our patella. And so if the patella, right, pulls and the ligament pulls, right? It can cause injury here to that um, tibial tuberosity. Right? So if you've got repeated trauma to this region, right? So it's constantly pulling or you bump it or something like that, right? And you cause damage here, right? This area is going to inflame. Then we may also get this fragmentation of the tibial tuberosity. And so when that happens, that is our Osgood shot, right? It's a loss of the tibial tuberosity. So if you take a look, normally the tibial tuberosity would be right here, like you would see kind of like this bump here, but as you can see, it's now kind of fragmented. Same thing over here, you can see it's kind of peeled off and fragmented. So the, if it deals with the tibial tuberosity, your first thought should be Osgood Schlatter, right? Tibial tuberosity is Osgood Schlatter. Yes, good. And um, they're different than bone spurs, right? Because bone spurs are uh, abnormal growth. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, this is different from bone spurs, right? Bone spurs does not have fragmentation, for example. Okay. Yes. So, what is, so in all these images, there's exposure, adjustment, none. What does that actually mean? Okay. What do we mean by exposure? The amount of uh, contrast that is given in the image. Okay, so how do you control that? With the light, I'm not sure. What are you setting at the control panel? 
These are definitely bone cysts. These are a lot more obvious. So is, is the, the piece of bone outside is the... <coughs> this bone here? Yes, what bone is that? Uh, it is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. Patella. That's right, it is the patella. Oh, that is the patella. That is patella. The kneecap. The kneecap, yes. And <laughs> um, Jalen, sometimes you have a sesamoid bone back here. Do you know what that would be called if it was back here? Okay. Yes. Um, That's okay. Yeah. Look it up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jay. So what are the exposure adjustments? Because I feel like that's going to be an next question. So do we need to make exposure adjustments for bone cysts? Yeah, I think so, so that you can see the shade of the... <coughs> yeah, or the shade would show anyway, so, so I think it's really so because there's a difference in this water there, we could then the shade is going to show anyway because more the liquid is more reducing. So bone cysts, you probably if it's like this, right? You probably would not need to make any exposure adjustments. If it was something that was really big, then maybe you could consider dropping it. But normally, I would say you can just I would say keep it the same, right? So. But what you would not do, right, is you would absolutely not increase your exposures. Bonuses can lead to fractures, right? Bonuses can lead to fractures, yes. But those would be pathologic fractures. Could you have one more? It's a certain the bimalular fracture, which is a pot fracture. Yes. So ah. and then when you say the stick fibula, which is actually the lateral fibula, right? So because when I was reading about it, so it said lateral fibula and medial, medial fib tibia, which was easier for me to remember as compared to trim, 
trimedular fracture because we were spread lateral, medial, and posterior. So is it that the lateral and medial, as in the trimedular fracture, is are, are those to the same two fractures in the pot fracture? So yes, you have two fractures of the malleolar line in the pot, three in the cotton, right? So you have two in the bimalleolar, three in the trimalleolar. The, the two so sorry. when we talk about these fractures, first of all, are these towards the top of the fibula or the bottom of the fibula? The bottom. Bottom. So that's what makes them distal fibula fractures. Can you have a left side and a right side at the bottom? Yes, so you can have also medial and lateral. They are not exclusive to each other. So it's not, is it medial or is it distal? The answer is, it's both. It is distal, and when it's distal, this is your medial malleolus. So the distal part of your tibula is your medial malleolus. The still of the tibia is the medial malleolus, right? Yes, because it is the medial part Sorry, I said that wrong. This the part of the fibula is the lateral malleolus. Yes, I apologize. This the part is lateral. So this the part of the tibia is your medial malleolus. Okay. So um, for your bimalleolar fracture, these are the two that are fractured, right? Your lateral on the fibula and your medial on the tibia. On the trimalleolar fracture, the only difference is we add one more malleolus, and that is the, the posterior. The posterior. Great. posterior malleolus, which belongs to which bone? Tibia. 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 The tibia is the big one. Okay. So, so yes, the posterior one belongs to the tibia. Yes, that's right. So this big one here, the tibia, this is the one where you have two malleoli. You have the uh, medial malleoli right here. And back here, you also have the posterior malleoli. That's the posterior, that's what Notice on this lateral, there's no fracture of the posterior malleolus, right? So that's why this is only bimalleolar. There's no fracture here in the back. If we look at our trimalleolar, do you see how there is a fracture in the back now? Right? Do you see you have this line right here? So that's why. That's what makes this try rather than <coughs> So the trimalleolar fracture is the posterior and medial tibia. Malleolus is fractured, correct? Right? So on the tibia, both the medial and the posterior are fractured. Correct. Posterior is on the tibia. Posterior is on the tibia, yes. Maybe. And only the try, what is called cotton fracture? Try is cotton, pi is pop. Tri is cotton fracture and bi is cotton. So remember CT, then you know it's cotton. <laughs> and then that one is CT. CT, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, or did someone else have yeah. guns? Yeah. There's two benign, correct? So there are two more benign that we're talking about now, yes. So we still yeah. have our original two benign, right, our enchondroma and our osteochondroma, right? But we are now adding on two additional ones, which are our osteoclastomas and our osteoid osteomas. So we come back here to the... So, for our benign, we still have enchondroma and osteochondroma, right? Mm -hmm. We are carrying these over from the upper extremities, mm -hmm. but we're just adding on these two additional benigns now. Because right? We've got osteoclastoma, the giant cell tumors looks kind of like your bone cysts, and your osteoid osteomas, right? The bone thickening with the small hole of lucency in the middle. And we can expect these on the test, the four lower extremity? Yes. Um, so it's a combined. <laughs> what about the quiz? Quiz? Yeah. 
He always looks up to the right. <laughs> so yes, malignant, right? You still have all of these for lower extremity. Are they part of Lawrence Pharmacy? Oof. Technically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, technically, I guess I could put them on the thing. Right. Mm. <laughs> Somebody didn't have Whataburger for lunch. Mm. I just had some fried green beans. Oh. Hey, hey. <laughs> Shout out to Fog and yeah. Healthy. I was ready to try them all day because I wasn't sure they were good. 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 Oh, that's what it was. No, no. Never everything tastes good for us. Mm. <laughs> that's true. I, didn't, I used to not like eggplant, and then I was introduced to fried eggplant, and then I developed the taste. In heaven, huh? So now I can eat eggplant even when they're not fried. It's okay Have you had eggplant lasagna? Uh, yes. Good stuff. Isn't that ratatouille? Kind of, yeah. Okay, any other questions over any of this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> they were thinking of the crossword puzzle, but that defeats the whole purpose. But it's just like all of these. See, that's the problem. I don't want you to do process of elimination. But you could put them all on there and like not have them all in the crossword, you know, so it would be like parachutes. No, 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 we need you to think. I need you to think. I need you to try to recall these. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, I got it. Oh. Right, so we have leg count per disease. Leg yes. yeah. yeah. count. Convenient because it tells you it deals with the leg, the leg. the hip. Leg Or is that the guy's name? Bless you. Yep, three people. Three people. Bless you. Bless you. She's sick, we need to go home. So you have to put our bamboo spike and glass of spike. Right? So, right, even though it deals with the spine, why did I include it as part of the pelvis? Because it's the lower It's with the L spine? Right, it deals with the hip as well. Right, focus. Sorry, focus. Oh, okay. Yeah, focus. So, focus. Yeah, focus. focus. Sorry, focus. so even though ankylosing spondylitis, right, deals with bamboo spine, it's here as part of the hip because it also includes the hip joint, where the spine connects to the hip. So it includes the fusion of the SI joints. Right? So that's why we have this here as part of our pelvis section rather than the spine. Although you'll see it again in the spine. Um, ooh. Well, I mean, that's not a good thing to have, but um, you'll have an advantage because we'll actually talk about spondylolysis and spondylolisthesis in the upcoming chapter. What is that? Too much. It's uh, so a slippage of the spine. I have it really good. Aww. Did that happen because of a fall? Yeah. It could be it's a fall. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 You feel this? <laughs> you know, my, my aunt, I think recently, my aunt developed this, I think, like, yeah. If you pay something, yeah. don't, don't play with me. Oh, thank you. Oh, no more. I got no food. Okay. So, like how first, <laughs> this one is necrosis. <laughs> what kind of necrosis? Of the femoral head. Yes, of the femoral head. Of what kind? Oh. What causes the necrosis? Lack of blood flow. Yes, lack of blood flow, right? So, so it's not that some yeah. virus or some disease yeah. got into the bone and started eating away at the bone, right? It's just because that the bone was not getting enough blood, that it just began to die off. Okay, so we call it aseptic or ischemic. Um, have you heard of something like ischemic? 
like ischemic stroke, I guess, right? Same idea, right? Lack of blood flow. Why is it more common in five to 10 years? That's a great question. I do not know. I assume that it's something that's congenital and it develops uh, at a rapid rate. So this is one of the ones where we're looking here at the joint, right? Something going on at the hip joint. In this case, what's going on? The femoral head has decayed. Like the femoral head is kind of worn away. It's kind of disappeared here. We have some other ones which also deal with the area. Yes. So we also have some other pathologies that also deal with this hip joint here, right? By the way. Do you remember what the name of this uh, joint is? This part of the pelvis? So right so up, up top of the, the shoulder, day, right? you've got the glenoid, right? Well, yeah. oh, what about down by the hip? Glenoid. No. It's a the Alright, Jamin, one more time. So what was the name of the pathology that it has different acetabulums or whatever they're called? The where one is like more um, uh, where where that hip isn't there, you know? How, do we where the hip is not there? It's you're talking about like, on that, oh, we, about that yeah. picture? Yeah. Displacement. Yes. Anthony's shoulders? That one? Yeah. You're talking about that one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was an x ray he did. You're talking about no, that No, no, I'm saying with like the DDH. Oh, that's yes. right. So, right? Another, another one of those pathologies dealing with that hip joint, right, is DDH or CDH, right? Dysplasia of the hip. We're also known as congenital dislocation of the hip. So basically, the acetabulum doesn't properly form, and so the femoral head doesn't properly fit inside, and so it's a lot easier for that femoral head to slip outside <coughs> of the acetabulum. It's a lot easier for it to dislocate itself. And, um, I'm sorry, um, so right, was Reiter's syndrome the one uh, that was also related to the GI tract infection? Uh, yes. So, Reiter syndrome, if we, go, if we go all the way back over to the heel here. So, Reiter syndrome. Okay. So, what's important about this one? Well, this one is unique because, that's right, it's caused by an infection or caused by a previous infection of the GI tract. So, there was a GI infection somehow or another, after the infection resolved, it made its way down towards the heel. It is crazy. Did, uh, did you find out why that is? No, let me check that right now. I think that was one of those things that you said you'd get back to the front. I'm not gonna let you forget that. So, <laughs> sorry, so yes, so there's a misunderstanding of the word theory in this case, right? A theory is something that is used to explain observations, right? So you've seen something, right? You're like, I see A, and then B happens, right? And I have observed that this happens, right? So I am going to develop a hypothesis. <laughs> I'm going to create a guess as to why these two things are connected, right? Not a theory yet, right? Just a hypothesis. I think A is connected to B, and I think they're connected in this manner. So that is 
your initial guess as to how things happen. So you see something, you're like, I'm gonna guess. I don't have the facts yet, but I think it makes sense. This, I think this explanation makes sense. So what is a theory? A theory is then you go and you start looking for those facts. You're like, all right, I'm gonna test this now to see if A always does cause B. I'm gonna test things to see if there's ever a situation where A does not cause B. I'm gonna go back up to nature and see if I can observe more situations where A does or does not cause B. And over time, you develop this body of evidence. Right? You develop all of this data that either supports or disproves the hypothesis. And as we get data that begins to support the hypothesis, that hypothesis then becomes a theory. Where it's like, well, we have not been able to find anything that disproves this yet, right? Everything we've done so far has shown that this is how it works, right? But we can't show conclusively 100% that this is always going to be the way it is, right? That's why it's not and, a law. And very few things in the world are provable like that. Laws usually deal more with equations and numbers like that. Right, so we have the law of gravity. We say that when you have an object with this mass and an object with that mass, that mass, they will have a certain gravitational pull to each other. Right, that's the law of gravity. But we also have a theory of gravity as well. Right, that gravity does exist, and this is how it behaves on certain objects. Can we prove that happens to everything, everywhere, in all situations? No, not really. And at certain places the theory of gravity doesn't quite work either. Like in places with either very, very low gravity, like subatomic, or areas with really, really high gravity, like black holes. Right? The theory of gravity starts to break down on those extremes. Right? Does that mean the theory's wrong? No, it just means that it needs some more clarification. It needs some more details filled in to properly explain those situations. Right? But a theory right, is not simply a guess. A theory does have evidence, it does have facts behind it that have made it accepted, right? There have not been any major things that have been able to show that the theory is mistaken or that the theory is wrong. <coughs> um, so let me take a look. So let's get back over here. Um, so why does this happen with GI tract infection? Let's take a look here. Okay. It's an inflammatory monoarticular or oligoarticular arthritis that follows an infection at a different site, commonly enteric or urogenital. Um, huh. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're still yeah, away. You're still away? Bro, you were sitting next to Don Hugh Lake. I got it on. I got it on. <laughs> you took a picture? I sure did, because I can't wait to show Anthony, because you know, Anthony was showing us some pictures oh, of, all, of like everybody who knocked out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's all biological clock, I just... Okay. <laughs> These are the facts. Hey, it's, it's okay. Yeah. On the first day. Oh, is she real? Huh? Classic. We didn't mean to stump you, Mr. Fung. It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about her. Oh, okay. 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 So every source I've looked at just says that it develops in reaction to the infection. But I'm not sure if it's that the infection is spreading down there or if it's just that the body has like overreacted from the infection and has caused it. I don't think it's the body doing it because I feel like they would mention mm -hmm. if, it's it was auto, if it was an autoimmune okay. disorder. So.
So, what is a conspiracy theory? No, oh, shit. I didn't say what is it, 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 is it? <laughs> No, I do not believe in a conspiracy theory. Thank you for letting me borrow this. So nice. so nice. All right, we have 15 more minutes. Any other questions about this chapter? If, if not, I do have just a bit of activity here for you. Activity? That's what we're doing. That's what we're calling it these days. You're tired? Oh, okay. Well, I'll have a different activity. No! She's having a lot of sales. So, she, 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 she,